Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, for anybody who celebrated Christmas yesterday, uh, happy Christmas. We are kind of still in Christmas. It's Boxing Day, the day when people traditionally gave each other presents. Um, but nowadays, we're far too impatient. We don't wait and we give each other presents immediately on Christmas Day. So, um, for those of you who had a Christmas yesterday, I hope it was very pleasant and that you didn't eat too much. It's a bit like Eid al-Adha, where we eat far too much. And then we say afterwards, we're going on diets, and we don't. <laughs> so, um, as you know, we were talking about uh, the course Practical Phonology for Teachers, which will be starting in January. Um, and before we start the course, we'd like to give you a little taster of what to expect. So, tonight, um, I'm going to show three activities. They're not necessarily the same ones that we'll see on the course, but just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that we'll be doing. Um, and because we are, you know, not in a Zoom session, so um, I want you to participate, but you can participate by writing in the comments box. So when we do something and I want you to respond, um, you can write your answers there. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to start with the first one. Um, and it's quite an easy one. So first, I'm going to read some words. And basically, this is about sounds. So uh, each time I will read uh, four words, but one sounds different. So it's the odd one out. So when you think that you have found the word that sounds different, you can write your answers in the comment. All right. So we'll do the first one as an example, as we say on CELTA, the demo. Um, always important, okay, rather than giving you long instructions. So, uh, are you ready? I'm going to assume you are, even though I can't hear you. So, let's do the first one. Barge, page, weight, pain. And I'll repeat them. Barge, page, weight, pain. Let's see if anybody got it. I'm not going to give you the answer immediately. So I'm going to test you. So I don't know if anybody's watching us at the moment. I'll repeat it one more time. Okay. Barge, page, Weight, pain. Don't worry if you don't spell the odd one out correctly because it's for listening. Somebody is very close. I'm going to say it one more time just in case of the sound problem. Thank you for asking. I'm going to say it one more time. Barge, page, weight, pain. I see we've got uh, one answer. I hope, Iman, you could hear it. So we're finding which one is different. Aha. Oh, I think some, some people have got it. Yes, I'm just going to keep waiting because I know that there's a, a, a brief delay, a few seconds delay after I've said things. So I'm going to let a few more of you try. Right, I'm going to give it five seconds more. Five, four, three, two, one. And uh, Islam was the first one to get it. Very good. Uh, the odd one out was barge. Um, just for interest, it's spelt B-A-R-G-E. Okay. So the other ones were A sound, and the odd one out was an R sound. All right. Because it was a 
barge. So I'll just let you know how, how it was again. So the first one was barge. The second one was page. The third one was weight. And the, the last one was pain. So these were all A sounds, but one was R. So I think Islam gets the prize. You were the champion for that one. Okay. All right. I'm going to try another one. See how you get on. So uh, barge was the long word, uh, actually, uh, Iman, um, because uh, page and uh, weight and pain are the A sound. They are not so long. They're, it's a diphthong, uh, two sounds. But the first one was barge. It's a long R. Okay. So like with the, you know, when you have the R with two dots. So the first one was the long sound. The others were shorter. So, and it's B-A-R-G-E. But it's not a common word. It's a kind of boat. But uh, we have them in Egypt, actually. But um, not everywhere. All right. Okay, let's do another one. Let's see if you're ready. So the next one is shy, frightened, stars, sigh. Shy, frightened, stars, sigh. Ah, yes, a good point about the transcription symbols. Don't worry about those. We've got the first person to answer. Yep, got two answers so far. Oh, three. Oh, excuse me, four. Well done, yes. Four answers there. And you are all correct. Alf Mabruk, excellent. Champions. All right. I'm going to try you with a couple more, as soon as you're doing it so well. Okie doke. So here's the next one. Horse, house, owl, found. Horse, house, owl, found. So I'm going faster this time. Because <laughs> you're teachers, so you're very good at this. Three answers so far. Great. Very speedy. Oh, four, excuse me. Excellent. And well noticed, Iman. Yes, they're all owl sounds, except horse, which is an or sound. So you all got it right. It was a horse as in the animal. So great work. All righty. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do it faster this time because you're doing this really, really well. Okay. A noise, snow, though, through. I'm being naughty this time. Would you like me to do this one again, just in case? I did say it fast, because I was trying to challenge you. A noise, snow, though, through. Aha. We have two answers, right, coming in. <laughs> a couple of di two different answers or three actually um i 
I'm going to repeat them just so you can decide whether you're going to change your answer or not. One moment, please. So, a noise, snow, though, through. Mm hmm. No, it's only one. It's the odd one out. That's the name of the game. There's only one that's different. But it was a slightly trickier one to try to make it a bit more difficult for you. Well, the champion is Islam. Well done. Uh, Alf Mabruk. Uh, it's through because all the others were the oi sound. So you've got um, a noise, okay? So to annoy someone, so third person singular, snow. And, ah, no, there were two. Oh, shame on me. I tricked you. Snow and though and through. So actually there were two uh, because it, uh, I'd forgotten that I was playing a naughty trick. So Iman, we're very well done. You were the one who was awake. Shatur Awi, excellent. Mm. There were two. So yes, a noise and through. So it was an odd two out. I was naughty. I did an odd two. <laughs> Iman is celebrating. Yes. <laughs> Very well done. I'd forgotten that I put two in there to be naughty. So well done. You, you were awake. <laughs> All right. Let's do the last one then. Let's see who, who does this one. Okay, so we have peer, uh, there, there, and stare. <laughs> okay, one answer in so far. I think everybody else is catching up, but we have one answer. Oh, yes, I'll say them again. So, peer, there, there, stare. Good, we have three answers. <laughs> Iman, you changed yours. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you five seconds, countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer indeed was peer. Yes. Uh, so, Iman, you were correct the first time. Okay, so is peer. Um, there are two words that sound identical peer, P E E, uh, sorry, P E R, or P I E R. Um, Two different things, but sound the same. <laughs> I think, Eman, you'll be dancing around your living room very shortly, <laughs> doing your happy dance. 
<laughs> okay, but well done. Um, it doesn't matter if you didn't uh, write it correctly, because I think you've got the idea. So, Muhammad, well done, because uh, you, even though I know you spelled it differently, I think you were on the right track. So, very nice indeed. Excellent. <laughs> so, always trust yourself. Yes, Emmanuel said, oh, I got confused, I was worried. I think we sometimes we don't trust ourselves. So, yes, so please do. And I'm glad to hear you're dancing around the room. <laughs> you see, pronunciation doesn't have to be boring. Okay. Um, now, I'd just like you to have a think for a, a few moments about the purpose of the activity. Um, what are we practicing? So first you did the activity as if you were students. So now it's time to put your uh, teaching hat on. All right. Um, or you can have a, a teaching crown. Here you are, that's my teaching hat. Okay. And decide how the activity, you know, what was the purpose of the activity for the students? Hmm. Okay, we've got three answers so far. One in Arabic. But I'm not sure I could know what that word is. I can read the letters. I think I can see Ein. Is that Sin and Lem? So that's a new one for me. Or it's not what I think it is. No, that's not a scene, is it? I'm not sure. Small script. My glasses are not very strong. <laughs> See if we get any more answers. But yes, uh, Iman, you, you found the answer immediately. It's about recognition. Um, I'm sure many of you as teachers have done activities with your students, you know, um, called minimal pairs, you know, where we um, get the students to practice recognizing sounds with, that, with two confusing sounds. So for example, for Arabic speakers, words with B and P. Um, because, as you know, we don't have the put sound in Arabic, so students often hear uh, a, they hear a p as a b, so a put as a but sound, um, and that's a very common problem. Um, so, in this case, we we focused on vowel sounds, okay, so like, like a and o and o and things like that. But this time, instead of uh, two options, we had four to make it slightly more challenging. Yes, well done, Muhammad. Yes, correct. Differentiating. So one of the examples like ah and air, um, you know, we had ow and or and things like this. Um, so there are lots of types of, of, of these that you can do. You can make up your own um, or you can use, you know, well-known pronunciation uh, teachers resource books, okay? Things like ship or sheep or ship and sheep, ship or ship and tree or three. I'm always mixing those up. Um, they have lots of examples and you can uh, adapt your own, especially if you use words that your students have particular problems with. Um, another point to think about as well is that this is receptive. So, you know, as you know, receptive is, you know, the students are receiving. So at this stage, the students aren't pronouncing the words. They are only hearing. So with minimal pair activities and uh, odd one out, you know, the students are simply listening and recognizing, as Iman rightly said, sound recognition, right? But of course, 
in order to produce, we have to receive. So the students need to try to hear the difference and then we get them to pronounce them. So obviously, if you did something like this in class, you do a few examples yourself as the teacher, and then the students can work in pairs or groups. One student reads out some words and the, the others have to listen and say, which was the odd one out, okay? So depending on the size of your class and the arrangement of your classroom, you could provide the words, the students could provide the words, um, and that would make it more student-centered and encourage more student practice. Um, in pairs, you'd get the most practice because obviously, you know, one student could say uh, four words and the other one listens and identifies it. Um, and then the other person, the one who listened, can then say the words and the other identifies. So that provides more um, productive practice as well. Okay. So it's very important with pronunciation to make sure that the students get a balance of receptive and productive, but we mustn't forget the productive, all right? Because there's only one way to know how to pronounce something, and that means pronouncing it, all right? And sometimes forgotten. Even the way some of the books are designed, you know, they focus on the receptive quite a lot, and then you think, oh, hang on a minute, the students actually have, haven't actually pronounced the, the, the sounds themselves. So that's essential. Okay, all right. So we're going to do another one. And for this, I need to share the screen. So um, it's actually, uh, it's from a pronunciation book. I'll give you the title afterwards because it's a copyright material. So you can take photos of it. Um, so I'm going to show it and I'd like you to take a, a screenshot. Or just take a photo with your, with your phones, please. All right, so one moment. I'll just reduce the size so you can take a photo of it. There you are, it's ready. Uh, has everybody had the chance to take a photograph? Uh, please, could you write yes in the comments box? Because if necessary, I'll show it again. Excellent. That's one. Thank you, Muhammad. Great. See if everybody else has had the chance. Ah, okay, I'll share it again. One moment. Sorry, I had to uh, reduce it so that you could get the whole photograph in. So you'll have to hold your phones up close to the screen. Any luck? 
So again, if you had the, if you were able to take a photo, please write uh, yes or done in the comments box, please. Did I say please twice? That's stupid of me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, it's small. I had to reduce it to so that you can see the whole page. So you'll have to sort of hold your phone right up to the screen because then you can enlarge it on your phone afterwards. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't know if any, everybody else had the chance to do it, um, but I will, oh, sorry. Um, I will uh, explain it and demonstrate it with you. Uh, this time with a larger screen, so it'll be easier to see. So you won't be able to see me, but you'll be able to hear me. All right. Um, so if you can see the photo, so let's go to shared screen. Okay. Now, just before I show it to you, it's uh, for this activity, we're practicing uh, word stress. Okay. So... Now you know. Okay. So let's go up a bit. So this activity is called Stepping Stones. It's from Pronunciation Games. As you can see, it's photocopyable. So we're not breaking any copyright. Okay. So the stepping stones are over a river. So to cross the river, you have to step and move across. But in order to cross the river, um, you must find the words where the stress is on the first syllable. Okay, so that's very, very important. Okie doke. So the stress is on the first syllable. All right. So I uh, hope you can see that part. All right. So if you look along the bottom, so you've got words here, correct, regret, answer, belong, invent. So which word has the stress on the first syllable? So in which word is the stress on the first syllable? And again, you can write it in your comments box, please. Okay, I'll uh, read them again. 
Okay, so we're trying to find the word with the stress on the first syllable. So I'll say the words as part of the example. So correct, regret, answer, belong, invent. So which word has the stress on the first syllable? Any ideas? Has anybody got it yet? Well, I'll give you the first answer, just in case you had a connection problem and couldn't hear. So the, the word in this line that has the stress on the first syllable is answer. Yes, because all the others have the stress on the second syllable. Okay, so correct, regret. Uh, belong, invent. Okay, so uh, if you got answer, you're on your way to crossing the river safely. Okay, now there are rules to this game. You can go vertically, you can go horizontally, uh, you can also go diagonally. Okay, so like that. Okay. Um, and if you find that in the next row, for example, that there aren't any words with the stress on the first syllable, you can jump to the next row, all right? So you can skip one, you can skip a line. So let's see if anybody managed to do this part. So I've given you the first one, if you didn't find it for yourselves, although I suspect some of you did. Um, so the first one was answer because the stress is on the first syllable. All righty. So now I want to see if you can find in the, in the second or third rows, if you can find a word with the stress on the first syllable. Okay, do you want me to share that again? So I'll just share again to make sure that you can all see it. Well, hopefully that's big enough to see. So the one with the stress on the first one is answer. See if you can find the others. Oh, did it show? I'll just try it again. Okay, one more share. Any ideas? Has anybody got it? Well, I don't know if anybody uh, could see it because I can't see your answers in the comments box. Um, but, ah, well done. Ah, somebody's got supply. Ah, so the stress on su in supply, is it the first or the second? Is it supply or supply?
I'll show you the screen again. Oh, I think you jumped quite a lot there. Um, there's supply, the stress is on the second, isn't it? Supply. Um, so you need one with the stress on the first syllable. So actually in the uh, second row, I think they're all second. So receive, provide, admit, compare, escape. Um, okay, I'll say the next ones. Allow, enter, believe, copy, Cancel. So, do we have any chances there? Any ideas? That's right, I'm waiting because I know there's a bit of a delay. So, who could find another word with a stress on the first syllable? So, the second row didn't have any. But in the third row, you might have noticed something. Oh, yes. Well done. Yes. Is your first name Gonzalez or Ralph? Um, yes, copy is one of the examples. Very good. There, there are others, but I, very well spotted. Excellent. So you, you are crossing the stream safely so far without falling in. All right, let's uh, keep going along there. And I won't make you do the whole thing because otherwise it's a bit boring to do it online like this. And... Another possible answer as well was um, cancel, because it's uh, the stress is on the first syllable, isn't it? And uh, enter as well, because it's not enter, is this? it's enter. So actually, you had a few choices there. All right, how about the next row, the, the fourth one, which stones are safe? So we've got happen, deny, repair, supply, decide. Any ideas? Ah, oh, very nice. Okay. We're getting some answers in. Nice. Excellent. Yes, happen, because that's on the first syllable, isn't it? So uh, it's not happen, it's happen. Excellent. All right. Ah, repair is the stress is on the second syllable. So it's repair, isn't it? Not repair, it's repair. All right. So happen is the correct answer. All right. I think you're getting the hang of this. We'll do. I said I was going to do one more last time, but I think you know, with all activities, people have to play a few times before it uh, starts making sense. All right, let's try one more. Well done, Mario. Yes, yes, correct as well. Very nice. Okay, so we're crossing the stream. So happen was the correct one. So now we've got uh listen demand pronounce improve describe so which one has the stress on the first syllable there's the stress there's the stress so the others have the stress on the second syllable and one of them has the stress sometimes two has have the stress on the first syllable so we're looking for the first syllable
So we have a bit of a long way to cross the river. All right, I'm going to wait for one more answer because uh, we've got different ones. I'll say a couple of those words again is demand, describe. So with those words, is the stress on the first or the second? Okay, five, four, three, two, one, da -da. Um, so the correct answer is listen, because the uh, stress uh, is on the first syllable, isn't it? It's listen, whereas describe, it's on the second syllable. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, there's somebody up the door. I'm so sorry. Back again. Sorry, I didn't mean to run away. So listen is correct because the stress is on the first syllable. Um, so the other words like demand, the stress is on the second syllable. Describe, the stress is on the second syllable. All right. Okay. So um, well done if you got listen. All righty. So uh, this is a, an activity for recognizing and practicing stress. Okay. So, um, again, it can be receptive and productive. Um, so, okay, so it's re receptive and productive. All right. Um, so, uh, the students can read the words to each other. So, uh, one can listen and one can say the words. All righty. So they can do it again. Like we said before, they could do it in groups. They could do it in pairs. Um, so very, very, you know, both are possible. It's up to you and how you like to organize your class. Um, the nice one with that is that there's an actual sort of uh, a task because they've got to cross the river using the stepping stones to cross the river or the stream safely. So it's good if you have pictures. Okay. So... That's from a book called Pronunciation Games, where they have photocopyable pronunciation activities um, that you can just, you know, the instructions are on one page and the activity is on another page. So most of the work has been done for you. You know, bless teachers' resource books. They take a lot of the pain um, out of preparing for us. So the only preparation is you have to read the instructions carefully. And maybe practice yourself. I always say practice with some colleagues or family members first, and then that will help you with the instructions in class. So that's another example. Our third example uh, is very short um, and very easy. So this is a bit like, uh, it's a kind of pronunciation tennis. So you know in tennis you, you hit the ball back and forth, all right? So in this case, we are going to uh, hit the words back and forth um, with the same sound, all right? So I'll do an example with you. Okie doke. Right, so um, my first word is pen, pen. So you need a word to hit back you need a word with the same vowel sound. So it's the e eh sound. So if you have, if you can reply to my tennis volley, please write your word in the comments box. Hmm. Oh, we've got one. Well done, I've got an answer already. So you were very quick to hit the ball back. Thank you very much, uh, Gonzalez, uh, Gonzalez Rauf. Yes, brilliant. Okay, I'm going to do another one. Well done, Mr. Speedy. Okay, 
uh, this one is the next one is uh, apple. So see if you can hit it back to me. Ah, uh, try again, because it must be the ah sound, okay? So, apple. So, of course, this is a British uh, sound using British English. Uh, in American English, it would be a softer sound, it would be like apple. So, uh, I'm using the hard uh, British ah, like hat, cat, yes? Excellent. Good. Wonderful. Great. I'm going to do a couple of few more. Before we stop, okay, so I have some uh, words written down. Um, okay, let's have a uh, picture. Picture, picture. So the sound is it. So you can hit the tennis ball. Okay, got my tennis racket ready. So the sound is it from picture. Keep going. Uh, not an e, an it. So uh, it's the short sound. It. Oh yes. Very good. Okay, we've got literature. Excellent, because it's the same it sound, isn't it? Marvellous. Okay, uh, here's another one. Uh, sweet. So, long E. So, sweet. I'm hitting the tennis racket. So, who's going to hit it back to me? Please don't hit me on the nose, okay? I've only got one. So remember, long E. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Uh, yes, very good. So we've got eat and sheep. Excellent. Very nice indeed. Okay. Uh, let's have, oh, yes, heat. Excellent. Yes, teeth. Very nice indeed. Great. I can see you're very good at tennis. You have managed to hit that ball back very quickly. Very, very good indeed. Excellent. We had a good selection of words. Uh, uh, this one, the next one, is going to be lighter, lighter, so it's I, I sound. Okay, so here it is, lighter, so I've hit a lie, an I sound at you. Okay, get your tennis rackets ready. Mm. Oh, some people are being super speedy. Very well done. Excellent. I've got I've got uh, four very good answers so far. I've got fighter, height, writer, lie. Excellent. That was a good hit. Okay, I'm going to do the last one with you. Um, power, power, owl sound. So, power. That's my tennis racket. Oh, I can use this. My special equipment. Power. Good, got one answer. So, oh, two answers, great. Oh, three. No, two. Two answers. No, three. That's I can. See. Now you understand why I need glasses. Uh, three is good. Very nice. Oh, four. Very good. Right. 
So far, I have coward, tower, shower, powder. Excellent. All perfect volleys. All right. Um, so that's our last activity. But I think, um, as you can see, it's very simple. Um, again, like all the, the like the other two activities that uh, I showed you, uh, we had receptive and productive. So at first, okay, because I was the teacher demonstrating it, um, I said the words. But if you did it in class, okay, you would do the same as me to start. You know, teacher, student, teacher, student, teacher, student, da, 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 and so on. And then you can put the students in pairs or groups or whatever works um, best for your class and they can practice with each other. But again, make sure they take turns. So it's not always the same student saying the word and the other uh, hitting the sound back. They should, you know, they should all take turns, okay? You can also do this as a whole class activity. So if your classroom, um, you know, doesn't, uh, you know, you find it difficult to organize pair work, you can actually have the class divided into two halves. You know, one side of the class is standing up, the other half of the class is standing up just behind their desks, and they just hit across to each other if you find that easier to control. So this all depends on how you like to organize your classes and what you feel most comfortable with. But again, as I said earlier, for, the, for any of these pronunciation activities to be successful, there must be receptive and productive. So listening is not enough. It's the first step. Just as when, you know, we learn to speak as babies, you know, we listen to our mummies and daddies speaking to us. And even though we're babies and we can't say anything, we're hearing lots of stuff. So we recognize before we produce. So receptive versus productive. All right. I hope you found uh, these activities useful. Um, and I hope most importantly, well, of course, most importantly is that they're useful, but also that they're easy to organize. All right. You know, they don't take too long to prepare, just a few minutes. Um, and that's the most important thing when you're a very busy teacher, because teachers are like, oh, I've got so many things to do. My curriculum is overloaded. Um, and the other thing is that you can always ask your students to do these things. You know, you can ask students to write lists of words that sound the same for homework and you check them before you start the activity. So this is another kind of homework that your students can do that uh, isn't just about, you know, the evil multiple choice activity or the gap fill, two things I personally uh, loathe as a teacher, but I know we have to do them. So uh, um, that's my, you know, personal and professional opinion. Um, so it's another kind of homework that might be more interesting for the students as a change. All right. So I hope that, uh, you know, you found them easy to use. I know it's difficult doing it in this format because we are, you know, doing it as a sort of an audience and presenter format, which is a bit strange. But the most important thing is these activities work online and face-to-face -face because if you're doing them in a Zoom class, again, you could still, we've done sort of word, you know, verb tennis, pronunciation tennis online. All of these things we can do in Zoom classes and we can do them in uh, offline or face-to-face -face classes as well. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments box. Um, if you find that your questions uh, occur afterwards, you can just send them to the International House link. Um, that's absolutely fine. And we look forward to seeing you either in another live or on the course on the 4th of January. Have a lovely evening and take care. And thank you for joining me and being such fun participants. Now I need my glasses to click the stop button. Sorry. <laughs> Bye.